Hello, my dear student. Welcome to my quarantine classroom. Today, I'm going to read the poem Autumn, written by John Clare, and it is there in your class nine English syllabus, uh, lesson number three, page number eighteen. It is a beautiful poem written in four different stanzas describing the autumnal landscape. But dear student, today I am going to read only the first two stanzas of the poem and try to understand its meaning. So dear student, let us read out the poem loudly first. I love the fitful gusts that shakes the casement all the day, and from the mossy in tree takes the faded leaf away, twirling it by the window pane with thousand others down the lane. I love to see the shaking twig dance till the shut up eve, the sparrow on the cottage rig, whose charm would make me believe that spring was just now floating by in summer's lap with flowers to lie. So, dear student, it was the first two stanzas of the poem. Now, look at the first line of the poem, and it is, "I love the fitful gust." Dear student, you can easily understand that the pronoun I is here actually the poet himself. The poem is written in first person. Here in the poem, the poet expresses love for the fitful gusts, which is very common during the season of autumn. Now, what is fitful gust? The word fitful means powerful, sudden. It is unsteady, not continuous. And gusts mean storm or wind. You may call it autumnal storm. In Bengali, we sometimes call it Domka Batas or Juru Batas. Now, my dear student, what the fitful gust do? It shakes the casement all the day. Now, dear student, you can easily imagine that is the poet is sitting inside his room by the window, which is very big. Actually, the casement is a big window, and watching everything happening outside there through the window. And what else is he watching there outside? He's watching the uh, faded leaves of the elm trees are being taken away by the fitful gusts. What normally happens when the fitful gust blows? The leaves of the tree are shaken off and they fall on the ground. Same thing is happening here. The faded leaves are falling down from the mossy elm tree. Now look at the face, the mossy M tree. M tree is not familiar to us because it is a tree of the poet's own country. It is not here in our own country, so it is not our point. The point is that the M tree is mossy. Now wh how, why it is mossy? It is mossy because it is covered in moss. But what does it suggest? My dear student, you know that uh, the season of autumn Autumn always signifies a sense of maturity, sense of maturation, ripeness, and uh, uh, fulfillment. Here, the mossy empty suggests that the tree is old. Yes, it symbolizes maturity, which is very much appropriate in the autumnal landscape. And on the other hand, the faded leaf suggest that something is rotten, something is ripened, which is also very much in keeping with the autumn landscape, which suggests, as I told you, maturity, ripeness, and fulfillment. And the poet also watches how is the leaf falling from the aim tree. He is watching, sitting in his room by the window, and he is looking through the window pane. Now, what is window pane? Pain is a glass sheet set on the window frame. Now he is watching everything happening here, there, outside, through the window pane. And he is watching a uh, leaf is falling down. How? Twilling. It is spinning and falling. Now, probably you all have seen what happened during the storm. The leaves fall down from the tree and it spin round and round and fall on the ground. Same thing is happening here. The tree leaves is spinning round and round and falling by the window. And where is the leaf going? It's going in the lane, down the lane, where the thousands of other leaves are already there on the road or in the lane. So it was the first stanza of the poem. Now look at the second stanza. And the first line of the second stanza is, I love to see the shaking twig, my dear student. 
you can easily imagine that the tree has become leafless. But maybe because of the uh, pitiful cast, all the leaves have shaken off the tree. So the poet is watching at watching the uh, shaking twig. Twig means very small branches of the tree. It is shaking. And in the second line, it's written that dance till the shot of Eve. Uh, you can easily understand that he is watching the dance of the twig and which is dancing until the evening, shot of the Eve. Eve means evening. And in the second line, it is written the sparrow on the cottage rake, on the top of the cottage roof. The poet is watching a sparrow is there. Now, here, uh, if we take into consideration the rhetorical device in version, we can easily agree the verb dance with the subject twig and make a meaning that the twig is dancing. But if the verb dance agrees with, with the uh, subject sparrow in the second line, the meaning is different. Now, look at the second meaning of the line dance till the shot of the, if the sparrow on the court is rigged and it is uh, it is uh, it means that the sparrow the poet watches the dance of the sparrow which is on the cottage rig but i'm not sure which meaning of the line is uh, appropriate so my dear student uh, who, uh, what is uh, uh, appropriate to you please make the comment in the comment box and let me know what is the exact meaning of the line now in the second line, in, in the next line, it's written, whose chop would make me believe. Whose chop means the chop of the sparrow. And it makes the poet believe that the spring was just now floating by. How? The question is how? Uh, my dear student, you know that the sparrow is a bird which is generally and widely hard during the season of, the season of spring. It is hard in the uh, month of April to June because it is their nesting period. But it is not that that it is only seen and hard only in during the season of uh, spring. It is also hard during the season of autumn also. But here the chop of the uh, the sound of the uh, sparrows reminded the poet poet of the spring which has already departed, and which has just departed. It means that the poet is writing the poem during the beginning of the season of autumn. And where, uh, how the spring has gone, it's, it's gone plotting. The plot, uh, plotting is a, a, a playful gesture usually shown by the human being. But here it is, uh, it is linked with the subject uh, uh, spring which is not at all a human being. So, dear student, you can easily understand that the word spring is here personified and where does the spring go uh, where where has the spring gone it has gone in the summer's lap in summer's lap summer's come ka, ka, summer's the season summer's come just after the spring and not alone the spring has gone with the flowers now what does uh, this line uh, suggest it suggests that the flowers are widely seen uh, during the season of, of spring, but with the advent of summer, the uh, flowers begins to begins to dry up, and uh, d during the beginning of autumn, uh, we we, uh, we we hardly see any flower there in the nature. So this uh, natural phenomenon is described in a poetic manner by saying that the spring has gone in the lap of summer with its flowers to lie.